Remembering Love. Now, you may have seen this amazing story earlier this year. A man from Connecticut with Alzheimer's asked his wife to marry him, not remembering that they actually were already married. They had a beautiful vow renewal ceremony, and the story went viral. Today, Lisa Marshall joins us to share her story and tell us how she's making a difference for others going through this caregiving process. So nice to have you. Thank you for having me. It is just an absolute delight. Tell us a little bit about your journey. When did you notice that Peter was starting to... Uh, started to fail. Yeah, I noticed certain signs, um, probably in his mid-40s looking back now, um, but didn't take him to the doctor until 2017 when he was 51. Wow. And now he's 56. He is. But I love this story because a lot of couples might wonder after they've been down the road of, uh, should we, you know, would we get, what, what, would, what would happen if we got married again? Or what would happen if we met today? And you guys really fell in love all over again and renewed your vows. We did, we did. We just, we've never stopped loving each other. It's just that Peter didn't realize that I was his wife yeah. <laughs> and thought we should do it. We should get married for the first time. It was incredible. What were you thinking? Like when you walked down that aisle the second time in that beautiful dress that you were wearing? Well, it was the same dress I wore the first time. Was it? I did not know that. <laughs> and you still fit. That's no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for going there. <laughs> There's no way I'd be fitting in mine. So I was like, that's amazing. All right. Well, but it's it's really a beautiful story, and it went viral. Um, because, you know, this is something that uh, it's heartbreaking, Alzheimer's, but you really have shown people how to handle this with grace. It's devastating. I mean, it, it really knocks families for a loop. But, mm -hmm. you know, my mantra all along has been no regrets and find joy every day. And, you know, even in the little things in life, you just have to. You can't focus on how difficult and devastating it is. You just have to continue to, to find joy. And Peter's having a good day today. He is having a good day today. He was laughing when I left the house. That's fantastic. <laughs> we love to hear that. 53700 is that the 53, number? $53,700. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that number because it's very important. It's, it's amazing. So, I mean, the number just kept climbing and climbing. The more people I asked for money, you know, for, for help. To, for help. Yeah, to raise money for the Alzheimer's Association, to research, you know, to find a cure for, for Alzheimer's. I asked a lot of people for a little bit of money, and a lot of people came through. That's just awesome. And the walk, a lot of people can continue to come through. It's going to be a nice weekend. The walk to end Alzheimer's is this Sunday. Yes. You're raising more money. But so many people are trying to unnecessarily handle this on their own. What's your message, one lesson for the caregivers out there? You can't. You can't do it alone. It's it's too much. You're, the care that you're going to provide for your loved one is not going to be the quality care that they should receive if you try to do it alone. You've got, I always say three things. You've got to accept help, you've got to learn to ask for help, and you have to articulate exactly what you need. I need a meal for the freezer. I need to take a nap. Can you come over and sit with him? I need a shower. Right. So mm. it's really important. I, I didn't to realize 80,000 people in Connecticut are living with Alzheimer's. Just read that yesterday. That yep. is just a remarkable number. And it's scary. It's a scary number. Yep. And, and that's, you know, we don't know a lot about why it starts, especially early onset, or and there's no cure. But this is something that uh, the Alzheimer's Association really has some programming and some help for people to handle it the way you're doing it and find those moments of joy. Yes, it's, the Alzheimer's Association has helped me tremendously from, you know, attending seminars to when I did the tour to find, a, you know, a facility, should we need one, a memory care facility. I was provided with, you know, a list of questions that I may not have otherwise asked. They offered me a $500 respite care grant to hire someone so I could go out and go to the dentist or go get a cup of coffee, mm -hmm. you know, with a girlfriend. So they're just always there. They've got a 24-hour hotline that you can call for I, anything. I want to give that number out, 1-800-272-3900. 1-800-272-3900. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You anything. can pick up the phone. You wake up in the middle of the night and something is burning in your brain, you call them. Isn't it and, just... and there's people there who know what you're going through. Yes. And that really, when you talk about uh, how, imp how important it is to find lessons of joy, that's part of the reason you can do that. Yes. yes. Yeah, so the number again is 1-800-272-3900. The walk is this Sunday. People can still sign up, right? They can, so, absolutely. Do you know Kristen Casado? She I works for the Alzheimer's Yeah, she's pretty good. She's a pretty good egg. She <laughs> works for the Alzheimer's Association. She so. used to be one of us. She's crossed over. Thanks, she's crossed Kristen. over. All right, 9 a.m., there's the information, alz.org slash walk. Uh, head out to Rensselaer Field. Great way to do uh, wonderful community service with your whole family. Absolutely, and thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Thank, thank you so much for Continued having me. Continued success. We yeah. appreciate thank your you time. Thank you very much.